Anyone who has maneuvered a car trailer at night knows that visibility is a huge issue, especially when trying to back in between poorly lit obstacles. Today we're going to fix that by installing four LED floodlights in various places to help illuminate around, behind, and under the trailer. Since this trailer has a 7-pin connector, we can connect these lights directly to the reverse circuit. However, we're going to take that a step further and add a single pole double throw switch to allow the lights to come on with either the reverse or tail light circuit. A single pole double throw or SPDT switch can be used two different ways. It can be used to send a single input to one of two different outputs. This makes it great for applications where you have two circuits that you don't want to unintentionally run at the same time. Inversely, it can be used to select one of two inputs to send to a single output without accidentally selecting both at the same time, such as selecting between battery and wall adapter power. Let's take a more in-depth look at a circuit specific to this application. The switch will be wired to select one of two available circuits and send the electricity from one of those circuits at a time directly to the lights. The switch also has a center off position which allows for the lights to be disabled completely which may be ideal in situations where the lights could distract other drivers or shine into people's windows late at night. The first pair of lights will mount on each of the fenders facing rearwards, and I decided to set them in a way that they sit below the top of the fender so that if there is any kind of debris, they don't get knocked out of alignment. Once the location of the mounting hole is determined, we'll use a punch to make a detent in the metal, and then drill it out with a standard hand drill. In this case, I used a small drill bit and then stepped up to a drill bit the size of the bolt that goes through the mounting surface. Since these are floodlights, I'm going to mount them at approximately zero degrees so that the beam spreads both downwards and upwards. This will ensure that the entire area behind the trailer is illuminated, including any low hanging obstacles that might collide with cargo on the trailer. We'll do the same thing on the other fender with the second light, making sure that it is also pointing straight ahead at zero degrees. The third light will be mounted on the center line of the trailer, down off of the second to last cross member. I chose this instead of the last cross member since it sits higher, which will not only protect the light from bottoming out on the ground, but it will also allow the beam to spread a little bit farther since it's roughly twice as high off the ground. Mounting it inside of the I-beam channel will also prevent any road hazards from knocking it out of alignment or completely knocking it off of the trailer. I mounted the fourth and final light off camera on one of the frontmost cross members, which will illuminate underneath of the trailer as well as light the front two tires, making them more visible in the rear view mirror. With all of the lights in position, we'll take a length of white 14 gauge wire and run it around the perimeter of the trailer, which will deliver 12 volts to each of our lights. I'm going to demonstrate how I connected these lights using the center rear light. For the ground, I just used a standard crimp on screw terminal and added a grounding screw. In hindsight, I probably could have grounded this wire to the bolt that holds the light in, but I wanted all of the wiring to be easily serviceable without interfering with the light's alignment or the alignment of the light interfering with the ground. For the 12 volt connection, I'm going to be using these controversial but incredibly convenient and versatile wire taps. This style connection allows for an unstripped wire to be directly connected to an existing wire without having to re-terminate that wire. In my opinion, none of these crimp on or tap on connectors are really great for any kind of outdoor application. 
yet nothing has really come along to replace them that offer a better weather resistant connection. So to increase the life of these connections, I'm going to wrap them in electrical tape and then just squirt a little bit of dielectric grease inside my tape. And I'm not gonna lie, this looks really ugly, but it will prolong the life of the wires while also still making them incredibly easy to access to repair if necessary. So I'll just do the same for the other three lights off camera, and then we'll wait for nightfall to test everything out. And as you can see, these floodlights are incredibly bright, and from above, we can demonstrate how bright they are compared to the existing reverse lights on the truck, or even my own headlights. And don't forget, we can flip that toggle switch to keep the floodlights on with the taillight circuit. Now I know what some of you with trailers are thinking here. Hey, I don't have a 7 pin connector on my trailer. Well in that case, you could still wire up these floodlights on a trailer that is only equipped with a flat 4 connector, and just simply wire a switch between the taillight circuit and the floodlights. You would only need a single pole, single throw switch in that application, which is just a standard on off switch. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope this video offered an interesting and useful way to wire up floodlights on your trailer. And if you don't own a trailer, I hope it was at least informative and maybe you can make use of this concept on a different project.